Good afternoon, my name is Jim Conlon and welcome to the latest edition of our entertainment show. All this month we're looking at cult classic TV series throughout the, throughout the decades and the TV series that is up for discussion this month is the iconic uh, Batman sort of series, a pre-Batman, a pre-sort of, uh, a pre-sort of Bruce Wayne, uh, a pre-sort of uh, James Gordon. It's all about uh, Gotham, the early foundations of the original Penguin, uh, the original Joker, how they came about. And Gotham ran for uh, five seasons, and I'm delighted to be joined by a uh, one of the main sort of villains, he played a role in two episodes in season four. He played the character Headhunter, the one and only Kyle Vincent Terry. And I, Kyle, I actually have seen those episodes and your portrayal awesome. of Headhunter. And I imagine awesome. of all the characters you've done, it probably must have been one of your favorites. Seemed an awful lot of, an awful lot of fun and he seemed like a real oh, yeah. sort of jovial type of character. Absolutely. Uh there, there are a few times, especially on camera, when you get to be so big. Uh, and that's, it's just such a joy to have that kind of freedom. And I think especially not having nearly as much source material can sometimes be a hindrance. But when you have so much freedom in, in this world, it allows a lot of room to uh, shape the, the character into a fullness based on uh, personal influences. That's, that's really great. And I got to draw on, you know, some of my own uh, roguish tendencies, I guess. And Kyle, I suppose you were playing in a sort of an assassin and a hitman, and you were mm -hmm. brought into it by Anthony uh, Carrigan's sort of character. So you were almost like a, a peas in a pod, the sort of two of you, especially when you sort of teamed up together. Absolutely. It was uh, great to have the... Uh, bromance, I guess, right? The uh, the immediate affinity uh, to, especially on on sets, you know, when you come in as a guest star, you're kind of isolated mm. uh, and off to your to yourself, and you're kind of brought in for dramatic dramatic purpose. But when you have uh, uh, an affinity built in, it just creates a, a synchronicity and a rhythm that helps drive things and make them even more fun. And I suppose, Kyle, in the first episode you appear uh, in season four, episode seven, A Dark Night, A Day in the Narrows, um, that was almost like a, a raid type of scenario where a, a section was sort of cut off and you're raiding uh, through it in terms of trying to find uh, maybe a, a stowaway, a sort of such. In terms of the right. location for that, in terms of the shooting for that, well, I imagine it was probably a, some abandoned sort of warehouse, was it? Or was it an abandoned sort of thing where they had multiple sort of floors? Uh, sorry, which episode are we talking? The uh, uh, season four, episode, uh, episode seven, A Dark Night, A Day in the Narrows. Yes. So that was actually in the Bronx, I okay. believe. Or, or Yonkers? Might have been Yonkers. Yonkers. Uh, and we were in a kind of an apartment complex, but it's, it's dimmed out and, and set dressed in a way that makes it look more uh, beat down than it is, which is kind of incredible. Uh, and so you end up with something that looks much more monochromatic or dichromatic than it actually is. Uh, there were people kind of everywhere, but the art department on Gotham is so good that the way it ends up looking in the finished product uh, between like the cars and the way people are in wardrobe, the costuming and, and placing of and, and lighting uh, makes it look much more dank than it really is. So even when I see the finished product, uh, I'm, I'm always amazed at the way in which the scenic and wardrobe teams transform a, a place completely. And Kyle, in terms of the headhunter character, I suppose yes. he was an a, assassin and obviously his prime uh, target was uh, his gun and the ability to, to shoot people, obviously, in the head. Right, but, um, right. In, in, in Always twice. Almost twice, yeah. <laughs> but um, 
Kyle, in terms of when you saw that sort of script and when you saw the portrayal, what was initially sort of going into your mind? Because we have all these sort of iconic villains in Gotham from the Riddler to, uh, to Payne Wing to Jerome Velasquez and early sort of Joker. So right. it's important that a villain has his own identity and he sort of stands out that he's not seen as a backward sort of pawn and sort of such. But you were coming in with this sort of headhunter and you were sort of saying to yourself, right, I need to sort of stand, probably stand out the way Penguin stands out, the way Jerome stands out. So, so was that a challenge probably with less material? Honestly, no. I, I think one thing that I really loved about the script was, uh, not, not to paint myself as a, a, a psychopath, but like mm. the, the joy and violence, mm. right? Like there's a, there's a childlike enjoyment in the seriousness of the job. Mm. So when you love what you do, you never work a day in your life, right? And so mm. the, really it was how much can you enjoy the rush? And in, in making that choice, jumping into the character on set felt much closer to me as a person because when you get to do those things it's easy to enjoy the magic of on-camera uh industry right the large machine so it really wasn't that hard to say okay you're gonna drag this old man out of a building and hold a gun to his head and proclaim everything to everyone isn't that great of course it is it's the coolest job in the world uh, so it actually grounded it a little bit more in my own emotional reaction to the thing, more so than feeling too far away from me, given the fact that I was shooting guns. I've been doing martial arts my whole life, so there is kind of a joy in the uh, physical percussiveness of things. So it was really just connecting with that more so than worrying about being too far from the thought of... Uh, wanting to kill he's like no if i just attach to this guy will die but the act of doing of shooting and chasing and fighting is still enjoyable then the consequences i don't have to necessarily worry about the actions take precedent and i suppose kyle in one thing about gotham is a character is truly never dead uh, that's the sort of yeah. scenario you, you, you can die I suppose they say a cat has nine lives but right, in, right. in Gotham I suppose you can have one more as an added sort of a bonus as such so when you landed the role the first role in the first episode and you got in you saw the script you must have been thinking to yourself right they're killing me off at the end of this it's a one sort Absolutely. of trick, trick pony sort of <laughs> such a, in terms of so how surprised were you and amazed when you got Hey, listen, no, uh, Headhunter's coming back again. He's technically not dead. Well, it, it happened in stages because you're absolutely right. The the minute I read the script, and and I don't mind dying on camera. You know, I'm I'm like a TV bachelor in most cases. I die all the time. But uh, it was it was funny because we did the death scene, and uh, Robin, who plays Penguin, was like, "Hey, man, it's it's gossip, you know. Like, but this is a threshold for you. Look forward to whatever comes next." And I was like, "Great." And the minute we wrapped that scene, uh, the line producer was like, you know, nobody dies in Gotham, right? Nobody really dies in Gotham. And I was like, yeah, okay. And I, I immediately was going on a train or a flight to shoot a short film right after that. So I left and just didn't think about it anymore. And uh, yeah, my, my reps called me like a month later and like, hey, you're coming back. And I was like, oh, but... I got stabbed pretty good. Mm. <laughs> I got stabbed, you know, the blood was coming out. And they're like, hey, yeah, it's Gotham. And I said, okay, great. So they did kind of tease that there's a chance that I would get back. But I just tend to divorce myself from it. But when they told me I was coming back, I was super thrilled. I loved working on the show. And I suppose you must have got your, when you obviously you watch a bit of Gotham, so you must have been thinking mm -hmm. to yourself, I'm going to come back as one of Dr. Wong's sort of super yeah. enhanced <laughs> hibernating sort of, uh, sort of, <laughs> uh, sort of characters uh, here in terms of right. uh, 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 sort of uh, humanized Robocop type version or something. Right, and I'm just plain old Wendell, just regular old Wendell with a patch on his eye. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, which to me feels great because I still, I get to be human. 
I love getting to be human. So the thought that it was like, no, nah, it's just that guy again, uh, felt like a bit of a uh, compliment to that I did my job, mm. right? Like, no, there, there was no reason to really amp me up anymore. I just got to be the thing that I filled, uh, which to me is always an honor. And Kyle, I got the sense in terms of the headhunter character is you came in towards season four, and I suppose mm -hmm. at the end of season four, there, there was an uncertainty whether they would get a season five. Yes. And once they right. told they got a, a season five, they, were, they all knew uh, from the start it was going to be their final season. So there's so mm -hmm. many angles left open that they, to close them, basically bring right. endings to every sort of thing. So I imagine that if you came in maybe an earlier start of season, a season three or so, that there would have been more than four recurring roles. So when you heard the season five was the end season, you were like, maybe hopefully do it in season six so that I could have more, <laughs> more roles and more appearances in season five. But in season five, it was very much battle down the hatches and try and get everything right. done as quick as much as possible. Right. There's, there's, there's no world in which... I would have said no to being back on the show, but the writing was on the wall. There's all these um, storylines to tie up. Uh, I would be lying if I said I didn't have the slightest glimmer of hope, the, the faintest sliver, uh, but it is what it is. It's the business in which we signed up for. And you've created this character now in Gotham, Headhunter, as sort mm -hmm. of such. And I suppose that opens up the opportunity because we've seen with movies, we've seen with TV series, uh, there always seems to be pop-ups in terms of animated TV series, animated comedies right, in right, terms right, of that right. character. And that character can be put now to drawings, to artwork, and in terms of voiceovers sure. as well. So that obviously yeah. might... It, spawn a more time with you coming back and maybe doing voiceovers for that would, uh, that would be in the future. That would be fantastic. I'd love to get to put that guy on again. Hmm. And in terms of Gotham, uh, in terms of being involved in such an iconic sort of franchise mm -hmm. as well, and you know, you take sort of series like Superman, Robocop, Spider-Man, sure. and to do what they did with Gotham for five seasons, it's very hard to imagine they could do something like that with Superman or Spider-Man sort of for five sort of seasons. So why do you think really Gotham in terms of, do you think it was maybe that they established so many back sort of characters that it wasn't primarily Batman versus good, Batman versus bad, one character versus one enemy the whole sort of time that there was multiple sort of storylines running through each episode. Is that why Gotham succeeded? You? Yeah, I, I also think that to a certain extent, the the interesting thing about the, the Batman universe, as opposed to the Superman universe, mm -hmm. the Superman is the most powerful, one of the most powerful mm -hmm. superheroes we have. Mm -hmm. So everyone he fights, is less powerful, mm. right? Can do less damage than a, a person who can change the orbit of the earth and shoot lasers out of his eyes and fly it, you know, faster than a spe speeding bullet. But Batman is uh, psychologically on several thresholds and human and constantly fighting people with more uh, specialized, I don't know, niche talents yeah. So the, the opportunity to expand and expand and expand is just greater with characters being introduced as villains uh, that are literal threats, like actual threats to uh, the Batman's life. And Kyle, for you now, I know it's a, a busy time. You're currently in theater sort of production. Uh, right, yes. Uh, in terms of, I, I think you're in New York at the moment. And I'm in Philly. Oh, you're Philly. Uh, so, Kyle, what's in the pipeline for you for the remainder of 2021 and 20? Have you any sort of TV series, movies, sort of guest sort of roles that we might see you on our TV screens maybe in the next year or so? I have nothing lined up on camera. I'll be working in Philly for the next couple of months. Okay. Uh, so as as things develop, I'll keep you posted. But uh, yeah, I'm on I'm on the. Uh, on stage grind right now giving it all the attention i got uh kyle lastly for the last 30 seconds i'm gonna sure. ask you um 
uh, a sort of question about Gotham and it's maybe just yes. some sort of memory, some sort of story from your time on set. It maybe it was backstage, maybe some interval, something that always stuck to you, a, a sort of personal sort of memory as such, or where it made you laugh or smile or something that, that sort of, maybe it's an interaction with one of the fellow actors or actresses that sure. sort of left this mark. Have, have you a sort of good story to round off round off the interview for the last 30 seconds? Abs absolutely. One of my favorite things about working on the set of Gotham, as opposed to any other set that I've been on, is that people in New York know what you're shooting. Mm. So uh, unlike everything else, you know, they may ask, oh, what's this, what's that? They know when Gotham is shooting around New York and they are very, very, very excited to interact with you. I've taken pictures with dogs, people's kids. Uh, and sometimes it's a really long shoot day and somebody comes up like, hey, would you take a picture with my dog? And I'm like, yeah. That's incredible. It's incredible to be part of something with such a um, unique hold on the uh, on a uh, on the entertainment sector of the population. How people, you know, feel uh, entertained or engaged, and even still, I I can be somewhere. I've been in several places where someone's like, "Hey, do I know you?" And I'm always like, "No." It's like, you look like an actor. It's like, well, I look like a lot of things. You say, say something else. And the minute I start talking and they're like, I know that voice. Were you headhunter? I'm like, yeah. And it's, it's amazing to have that kind of effect. And it's amazing that they're, to be part of a unit that created that with such detail and care to every aspect of the storyteller. Um, in terms of ensemble, one of the nicest ensembles I've ever worked with. Uh, everybody from Dono to Ben, like just incredible people, Robin, Victor, like everybody was just really great. Uh, I see you interviewed Stu. Yeah. Stu, Stu Large, fantastic dude. Um, yeah, I think all around just a really healthy experience. Everything from uh, the first day of read through to years later of people just saying, hey, you're one of my favorite things I've seen. And who can not love that? I think there are many lulls in this profession. And so having something that carries so thoroughly uh, through pop culture internationally is uh, pretty special. I feel really honored. So Kyle, for the last 10 seconds now, we're going to yeah. turn over to Headhunter for him, himself. Yes. And he's going to give us a line sort of close out his time in Gotham and maybe leave it open for another possible return. That's right. All right. Uh, hey, look, if you see me on the street and you want to take a photo, make sure you shoot. But I always shoot twice. On that note, Kyle Vincent Terry, right absolute on. pleasure talking to you today to relive your memories of your time in Gotham playing a headhunter. No doubt an iconic TV series. You were part of it. You're part of the ensemble, the furniture. No one can start to take that away from you in terms of your Absolutely. And hopefully, please God, it's not the last we see of headhunter in the Batman sort of franchise that uh, he sort of it's the birth of a, a new dawn, let's dare we say. There you uh, go. Kyle, uh, take care and God bless. Thank you so much. Have a great one. Cheers. Take care. All right. Take care.